Hi, I'm Rachel, and today I'm going to be showing you how you can create your own custom-designed clear journaling stamps. I don't know about you, but I've always wanted to have a set of my own designs on journaling stamps that I can use when I write and do journaling and doing scrapbooking and such things like that. So I'm going to show you how to do that today, and it's actually very, very simple. Here are the supplies that you need to get started. You need an idea, you need a piece of paper that you can draw your idea out on using a black marker, fine tip marker, or you can do use something like Procreate on an iPad, or you can use Photoshop, which is what I will be doing, and I'll walk you through that. And then after you get your stamps in, you will need some stamp pads, you will need your stamps that come in the mail, you're going to order them, some scissors to cut them out with, as well as these little clear blocks to put your stamps on to be able to stamp with, and maybe a little tray that you can put the used stamps in so they don't get your table messy with the ink. And that's all there is to it. I'm gonna first go over to my computer and show you how I design on Photoshop. It's really quite simple. If you were gonna use Procreate, you would just create a layer you would just draw with black on a either a clear background as a PNG file or on a white background and save it as a JPEG. The company that I work with, they use either type of file, so it really doesn't matter if the background is there or not. If you're going to be drawing by hand, I suggest that you first draw, block out the space that your stamp will be. Typically, when you order stamps through the mail, the largest size that they can create is six inches by four inches, unless you're going with a commercial grade company um, overseas. So I would first draw out a six by six area on my paper so that I can ensure that all my stamps fit into that space. Now, right now I'm just doing a rough out for you. If I were really doing this for real on paper, I would use graph paper to ensure that my angles are straight or I would line it up edge to edge to make sure that my um, I have straight angles. So this is roughly the six inches by four inches and all of my designs need to be within this space. And then I can start doodling with my pen. I could draw a flower. The main thing that you need to keep in mind when you're designing a stamp is that the line weight needs to be thick enough so they can actually make an impression when you go to stamp it. If it's too skinny it's not going to work. Also, if you want to make words, then you need to make sure that the font size that you select is at seven points or, or above, preferably eight points. Those make it very legible. Make sure that you leave room between each of your designs so that there's space to cut them out. I like to leave no less than a quarter inch, preferably more like three eighths of an inch in between each design. That way I know that there's room to cut around it. You could also draw yourself a line around it whenever you're creating them, but then make sure you erase that line because that would also print as part of the stamp. The first thing we're going to do is go to rubberstamps.com, which is the company that I like to order my stamps from, and we want to find out the sizes that they um, can be ordered in. I want to find the largest size available, so I'm going to clear stamps, and we can see their sizes here, 2x2, two 4x4, two, four four, and over here on the right is a 6x4. You could also do it 4x6, depending on if you want landscape or portrait. And you can see all the sizes. Yes, that's the one that I want to select. So let's go look over here at wood stamps. If you wanted to create a wood stamp, you could do that as well. Um, it's the same process. You would just draw your line drawing, then upload your file. They have a four inch by eight inch wood stamp. But I wanna make clear stamps today, so let's click on that. And then when you click on the clear stamp, it takes you to this page where you would upload your image right there and you wouldn't have to do anything else but upload a JPEG or a PNG. Okay, let's create a new document in Photoshop. In inches, it's gonna be six inches wide by four inches high and we need to name it. I'm gonna call this Stamps Cafe because this is going to be a cafe themed stamp, stamp set. 
So once I've named it, I need to create another layer to work on. I want to work on a clear layer. If you were to work on the background layer, you couldn't move your stamps around. And it's important to make sure that when you're drawing, you leave at least a quarter inch to a three eighths inch around each stamp so that you have room to cut them out. So let's make sure that snap is turned off so that I can draw. And let's get drawing now. If you don't have a digital program and you want to draw on paper, you will need to scan it in when you're completed with your drawings. If you don't have a scanner, you can always take a photo with your phone or with an iPad and that should do fine. And then you can upload it to the rubberstamps.com. I've just completed my design on Photoshop and printed it out. You can see here that this entire design fits within a six inch by four inch space. I have uploaded it to customstamps.com and ordered it and am waiting for it to come in the mail. So this particular one I do not have for this video here, but I have eight other stamp designs that I went ahead and ordered When you get them in the mail, these stamps arrive on one solid sheet of six inches by four inches of clear, um, clear stamp. Is it silicone? They're silicone stamps. Since I created these stamps a little while ago, I have only vertical videos of me cutting them out and I can show you those, how they look when they first arrive and me cutting them out. one out here. They're very sticky. And I pulled off the entire sheet and then I took my scissors and just cut them, cut around each stamp. And then I stuck them back on the sheet. Now the company rubberstamps.com does not provide you with a transparency printed with your designs, but that's easy to do. You could either buy it yourself, buy a pack of transparency sheets from Amazon or from some other local provider, print out your designs on your printer, and then attach that as the top sheet. I did not do that extra step because I didn't feel the need to. Anyway, but I think it's a nice idea. I just keep them in the original sleeves that they came in but you could choose to keep them outside of the sleeves and just stack them in your in a bin or a drawer. Now, I want to show you, so I'll show you some of the designs that I've made. I, print, I went ahead and stamped them all, and I have here my florals and nature stamps, my calendar stamps, I got this idea from a stamp collection that I saw on Etsy. So the idea is not original to me, however all the designs are original to me. I didn't copy any of the pictures that they had and I decided to draw what I wanted to represent each of the months. I really like this set. And here is another set. These are more borders. This one has some cake and refreshment. This one would be a little bit more miscellaneous. It has a little bit of a film strip at the top. 
has uh, some date and times. This one has a book, a book list check mark, a meal check mark, a meal stamp, and travel stamps. Here's some numbers for the dates of the calendar, and here they are again in reverse. This one has the exterior with the numbers clear, and this one has the numbers stamped along with the days. And here's the last one that has words on it. So I think the best idea is to come up with a theme and create all your items and your stamps for that one sheet having that same theme. That way when you're going to find a particular stamp, you know, oh, that one's in the Hugas collection or cozy items collection or that one's in my winter time or that one's in my food and cafe stamps. So the one that I decided to do for today, as you saw when I was working on the computer, is my cafe stamps. And it's a food related cozy cozy weather kind of theme. So I've created teacups, uh, cake, slices, a teapot, coffee mug, tea bag, spoon, coffee pot, honey and jam, candles, cake, baskets, socks and so on and so forth. I'm going to select my nature one to show you. Let's see, where is that? I think it's this one. And something that I didn't mention earlier is you might want to invest in some clear stamp cleaner. I have cleaned them off with just dish soap and that does work fairly well, but there are some inks that tend to not wash off as well. And you might want to have a little tiny dish to put the stamps in. And then you can use this dish to wash them because they're so small, they could rinse down the sink and you don't want to lose them down your drain hole. Okay, so let's open this set up. These are my nature stamps. I had fun making these. Okay, I'm going to use probably this size stamp. And let's use green. And let's start over here on the edge. So with these stamps, you just basically place them on your clear block. Make sure that you push, but not too hard, otherwise you'll get the edges of the stamp. And then stamp away. When I'm finished, I drop it into here. You could also just put it back on here, but I do want to clean off my stamps, so I'm going to put it into this bin. Put another one here. you can see. I love how these stamps turned out. The line weight worked well and I think we didn't really lose any details. Have you been thinking about what type of stamps you want to create? You might want to sketch out a few of the ideas before you make your real one if you're doing it on paper. If you're doing it digitally it's easy to erase. But you want to arrange them to get as many as possible on one single sheet. That way you're getting your money's worth. There's so many different ideas of what you could draw for your stamp collection. You could make actual postage stamps. You could do words that you use frequently in your journaling. You could do prompts. You could do all kinds of things in nature such as birds, mushrooms, leaves, different types of leaves, foliage, nuts, woodland animals, pets, coffee, coffee house theme. You could do phases of the moon, stars, sun, moon, and stars kind of thing you could do. Sports, things like skiing, wintertime sports, summertime sports, swimming, bicycles, books, your favorite books. You could do all kinds of things. Whatever your hobby is, music, music notes, music symbols to use. Maybe you're a composer. Maybe you're a musician and you'd like to make a treble clef and other musical symbols. Bass, treble clef, bass clef, other musical symbols. So I threw a snowflake in this one. It's kind of funny. 
Anyway, the sky is the limit. You could also draw your own cute characters and print them out. The key is to have fun. I really like how this set turned out. Now I have all of my stamps returned to the clear sheet that it comes with and I'm going to put these in this bin and take them to wash and clean off and there you have it. Here is my nature stamp collection. I'm curious what you're going to make. Let me know what your designs are all about and what theme that you picked. I'd love to know. I think life is so much more exciting when you personalize it, which is why I created my own custom journaling stamps. I mean, I do own some other journaling stamps and I think they're wonderful and they're so cute. I love personalizing my life with things that I have created and things that are meaningful to me, which is why I've created all these different stamp collections. I've selected the font that I love for these numbers. It's a, it's a vintage -y font that I really, really like. And so when I stamp with this, I just, it makes me smile inside. And I think that's the point of making and creating your own art is it refreshes your soul. It helps you feel more connected to the things that you're doing throughout your day. And it's also doing something that you can give to others. And I could give it to a friend who I know loves and enjoys journaling. So you can spread the joy that way. I hope you've enjoyed watching this and my beeper is beeping so I need to get up and go turn off this what's on the stove cooking. Have a great day and go and make some art today.